Hi, everybody. Well, oh, my name is Stacy. And my name is Mickey, her daughter. Wait, and we messed up. <laughs> and welcome to Kitty Nomics. Yay! Thank you, everybody, for joining us today for our another edition of Kitty Nomics. Let me start as usual by doing our housekeeping items. So just give me one second and I'm going to share my screen. I think everybody can see that. Okay. So first off, you know what? You know what I forget to do every week? You know what I forget to do is welcome all the new kitties that are joining us today. Oh yeah. Yeah. So welcome. If this is your first kitty nomics. Welcome. Uh, we have a whole bunch of videos for you to catch up on. So please check out our YouTube channel to make sure that you're up to date and on the series of Kittynomics. But we'd like to welcome you, all the new ones. And of course, we'd like to thank all the returning Kittynomics kitties for returning each and every week. We love you for it. And thank you for sharing all of your good wishes and your accomplishments with us. It has been a phenomenal time. So what is Kittynomics? So what is Kittynomics? Kittynomics is here to help kids ages eight plus develop a healthy relationship towards financial literacy. Helping, kids, helping to start kids off on the right path to have a successful financial future. That's what we want for you. That's what we're here for each and every week, just to develop your skills for financial literacy because it doesn't matter what country you're in. It doesn't matter how much money you have or how much money you don't have. It doesn't matter your economic or your socioeconomic backgrounds. It doesn't matter any of that because financial literacy will help you in any situation that you have. So talking about that, we'd like to welcome this week's topic, which is resume writing for kids. This, I am so excited about this one. I'm excited every week, as you know. Like, we are super excited. But I'm a hyper all the time. <laughs> yeah. Yes, she is. But we're super excited because, as I mentioned a couple of weeks ago, I got my first job when I was 11 years old delivering papers for the sun, right? So every Sunday, I, in, before uh, we went to church, we, I delivered the paper. And I didn't know anything about writing a resume as a child. And I am super excited that Miss Jane Janeri is going to be here today from Staff Optimization to help show us what do you need in a resume? And like, what is a resume? So I'm just gonna uh, introduce her. So this is Miss Jane Janeri. She's a veteran career and interview coach with just over 20 years of experience. Prior to starting her own boutique staffing firm, Jane worked for the largest global specialized staffing agency for 17 years in, in various management capacities. She, <clears throat> excuse me. She is the founder, CEO of her boutique staffing agency, Staff Optimization. Staff Optimization is a boutique staffing firm that specializes in the placement of accounting, finance, cybersecurity, oh, that's a good one, cybersecurity and information security, professionals on a full-time basis. Jane is also a passionate and passionate and has a special interest in working and representing women and youth of color to help them overcome the barriers that they may face when trying to advance themselves in the workplace and workforce. So we'd like to give a big kitty nomics welcome to Miss Jane. Thank you so much for joining us today. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen and there she is in our lovely yellow, love it for the summer. And yes, I'm here and I'm so excited to talk about something that I love to do. And one of my most favorite topics is resume writing, resume preparation and getting kids and people ready for their future success. Yes, so oh, yeah. kids, before you start, I would just, oops, sorry, before we start, I forgot to mention Make sure you have your books out, right? Your writing books, yes. your pencil, because we're going to take notes and we are going to maybe possibly play a game or two or a quiz. Yes. So we need to make sure you have your book. We always have our Kittynomics book ready and we jot down all the information. So make sure you guys have yours too, okay? Sorry okay. about that. Good. All right. So welcome, everyone. So happy to be here. Now I'm going to share my screen. Oopsie. 
and a little bit where are you from? Okay. Bear with me, having a little bit of a. Uh oh. <laughs> there we go. There we go. All right. So I'm so excited to be part of this Kitty Nomics webinar. And like I said, I'm going to be speaking about um, resumes. So today, what we'll be speaking about is what is a resume, why a resume is important key words to have on your resume and how to write a resume. So there will be some work for you to do in the end. So it's going to be really, really important to be rock stars during this presentation and take down all the information that you need in order to have your most perfect resume. All right. So thank you so much, Stacey, for the introduction. But I'm just going to tell you guys a little bit about who I am. So my name is Jane Janair, but before everything else, I want you to know that I'm a mom, I'm a sister, and I'm a friend to most, of, most people. So with those skills, I have had the ability to learn how to be a really great recruiter because I am also a business owner. And within my business, as a recruiter, I act as a staffing specialist, a career coach, and most people call me a recruiter. So what does a recruiter do? Does anybody know what exactly a recruiter does for a living? Because it is a real job. So does anybody put your answers in the chat if somebody can tell me what a recruiter does? Do you know what a recruiter does? I think a recruiter does a skill of writing and then after they put it in a doc, she says she thinks a recruiter does writing and then put it in a doc. Egypt and Niobe says um, they say helps bring people in. Helps Hires people, people bring? says Pearl. Sorry? Hires people says Pearl. Pearl says hires people. Hires people, good. And then what did Egypt say? Egypt says bring, bring, brings people in. Um, people Mustafa, in. Mu, uh, Mustafa says hires people. Yes, hires people. Okay, Mustafa, Egypt, and Pearl. Pearl. Okay, you're all on the right track. Does anybody else have any other answers? Um, so Pearl else, oh, Pert says match people with the right job. Whoa, I think Pert needs to come and work for me. They really know what they're talking about. And Carter says finds people for finds people for jobs. That's what I was gonna say. <laughs> of course, of course. So a recruiter's job or a staffing specialist helps companies find new employees. So what happens is a company would call and say, Hi Jane, I'm looking for an accountant, I'm looking for a salesperson. I'm looking for a shoemaker. They could ask me to recruit for anything, but I do have a specialization, which is mostly accounting and information technology, otherwise known as IT and administration. But sometimes, depending on my relationship, they'll ask me for other things. So they'll come to me and say, I'm looking for this exceptional talent. The other thing that a recruiter does is helps candidates find new jobs. So sometimes people want to, they're in their current position and they're looking for something new because they would like to advance their skills or skill sets, or they're not working at the moment and they've never had a job before and they'll come to me and say, hey Jane, is there any way that you could help me find a job? And then I would have a whole inventory discussion with them or a discovery discussion to find out all the things that they may be good at. And we're going to come back to that. The other thing that I do is interview, and it's not on here, but I interview candidates for clients and for companies and employers. So what that means is I have to come in and meet with me before they meet my client or the employer. 
and I have to interview them and assess if they're good or not for the position. And then I will introduce those candidates or potential employees. So if you ever, if you hear me through the conversation today saying candidates, I'm talking about people like you potentially who will become an employee at an organization. So I introduce you as the candidate or potential employee to my client and they shake hands, but what's different about that today? If I'm introducing a company, a candidate or an employee to a company face to face, what do you think that's in this picture that's probably not happening today? There's a little picture on there. Tell me what's not happening based on the times that we're in. Um, most likely right now. We're not meeting people. No, we're not meeting people. Right, we're not meeting people. We're not meeting people, not meeting people face to face. So look at the picture on the screen and tell me what we're not doing anymore. And there's going to be a prize for someone. Carter who says that. handshakes. Handshake. Put that person's name down. You just won the first prize. We're not doing handshakes. And tell me why we're not doing handshakes right now. Mickey. Coronavirus and we don't want to catch it. That's right. We don't want to spread any germs. So right now, that's the biggest change that has happened in the workforce today is that Nobody is shaking hands. And in fact, nobody's doing face-to-face -face interviews right now, okay? So although we have to do a virtual handshake, but we're just not touching anybody. So my responsibility is to introduce employees or candidates to the company. But before that, like I said, I have to make sure that those people, employees or candidates have the right skills for the job that the company is ask, asking me to find. Any questions about that? Yeah. And I love this job because one of my superpowers is that I'm really smart about understanding people and their experience, right? And so with that skill, I can take that into being a recruiter. All right, any questions? Okay. Where is my arrow? <laughs> oh, there we go. All right. So as I said here, so I have to review and screen resumes. I don't, I don't think I spoke about that. So can anybody tell me what a resume is? I'm reviewing resumes. Does anybody know what a resume is? Mickey? I know what it is because I learned it in school. So basically, we have to talk louder. So basically, what it is, it's like a thing where you write some, you write about something, and it's then it's like, so like you have a a, a question, and mm -hmm. then okay. So hold on, sorry. Um, we'll wrap that up in a second, right? <laughs> Sometimes you take a little bit long to answer. Uh, so we have a few answers on, yeah. the, on the chat. A resume, yeah. so Egypt says, a resume is an application for a job. Pert says, a list of skills. Uh, Bulbul says, a paper about what you know uh, or who you are. Uh, Mustafa says, writing a paper to let the employer know your skills. Good job. Uh, Danish says, a resume is a paper detailing all your work experience and qualifications for the job you're applying for. What was that last person's name? Danish. Danish. Danish, you're going to have to come work for me. Great answer. All of those answers were fantastic. Okay, but yes, a resume is a summary of a person's experience and qualifications. Excellent job, guys. You guys can probably run this presentation better than I can. So just to break it down, a resume is a document, right? I think Mickey said it was a thing. So whenever someone says to you in the future, what is a resume? Your first word is going to be that it is a it's a document which outlines your work experience, your education, and special skills. 
and we're going to talk about special skills. Okay, because these are what I call when I'm speaking to uh, candidates or um, if employees, special skills are like your magic superpower, and I call them for adults a unique identifier. So if anyone can write that down, a unique identifier is also called a special skill. But I guess you're saying, but I'm a kid. I don't have any work experience. Raise your hand in the chat room if you believe that you're just a kid and you don't have any work experience. Okay, Mickey says she has no work experience because she's a kid, right? When I was a kid too, I thought I didn't have any work experience. Now what am I going to do? Who else is saying that they don't have any work experience? So we've had a couple of participants say that they, uh, they've raised their hands. Um, okay. Nana Bear says, well, she goes to school. So that's, that's, that's a skill. <laughs> is it? Are you sure? That's Anybody sure. else? Mickey doesn't have any skills or work experience. When I was little, I thought the same thing. I didn't have any work experience or any skills. Anybody else? So Bull Bull says I, they do coding. So that's cool. Yeah, try. You should be coding. Wow, okay, coding. Who said that? Uh, Bull Bull. Okay, so keep that name down. All right, so I have a secret to tell all of you. Does anybody know what my secret is? No, it's no. a secret. Right. <laughs> <laughs> my secret is that you, I'm going to let the secret out the bag, but you do have experience. I knew that. Yeah, you do have lots of experience because when you think to all the things that you do, oh, sorry. When you think about all the things that you're doing every single day, you are actually gaining experience for your very first job, okay? So as much as we think that, oh, you know what, I'm going to school, I'm just going to school to learn because that is my job, you're absolutely right. That's where you're gaining experience. Can somebody tell me that when you're in the classroom, what type of experience are you getting? Mickey. Um, the experience that I'm getting is like, like a skill that makes me like more smarter. So when I need that answer, I know the answer and I can get it more, like I can use that answer for more powerful. Yes. And in order for you, good, good answer. And for you to get that skill and learn more so that you can be smarter, what is it that you have to do really, really well to get that information? You have to, um, think you have to think Take anybody it. else what other what other senses are you using to get the skills when you're in the classroom the carter says listen listening yes that is the big skill that people take for granted if you're not a good listener you probably do not take instructions well and it might mean that you're not gonna be fit for a certain job that you want. So listening is one of the number one skill sets that is so important. What else? And Melissa says, focus. Focus. Focus and paying attention. I'm gonna tell you a little secret. When I was in school, that wasn't my most easiest thing or favorite thing to focus because I was easily distracted looking around and talking and they'd have to say, Jane, you need to pay attention. So I had to learn how to pay attention, learn how to be a great listener. And now I find that I have to do that in my job as a recruiter, okay? And I didn't know that I was gonna ever be a recruiter. You don't go to university to become a recruiter, but I learned these skills that I learned to do well, which gave me my dream job, which is recruitment. So, so when um, we Mustafa, take on all these skills, yes. Sorry, Mustafa says independent working and learning. Yes. And, uh, uh, oh, uh, Naomi's, Naomi says that, uh, I think she's saying, I delivered the paper and I get $5 an hour. Good job. So I think you're already employed. That's awesome. You're already employed already. You're ahead of the game. Excellent. Okay, so we're going to move on. 
So when you're gaining all of these skills, we're gonna call them today your superpowers. And there was another word that I used for a superpower. Who can tell me what those two words are? Super and power. <laughs> no, so two not. other words, they're a bonus question. Who can tell me what another two words are for superpower? How will you be looked at by your employer? What makes you a little bit different is your superpower and two other words. Does anybody know? Superhero. <laughs> Superheroes? Because you're all superheroes today. Unique. Uh, Egypt says unique, but that's not her word. It's two uh, words. It's two words. Oh, so uh, Carter got it right. Unique identifier. Unique Yay, Carter. identifier. <laughs> Woo! So you're going to get a prize. Awesome. So your unique identifier, something that makes you different, because guess what, guys? We're in a society, in a world that is very educated. So every time you go for a position or apply for a new job or want to be promoted into a new opportunity, it's gonna be your responsibility, and I'm gonna say this again, it's your responsibility to know what your superpowers are and what your, Mickey, unique? Identify what your unique identifiers are. It's your responsibility because you're going to be sharing and telling your career story, okay? All right, so what I want you to do is, like Miss Stacy said, I hope you have your pen and paper out. I would like you to ask yourself, what am I really good at doing? So when I'm in the classroom, in my spare time, when I'm with my friends, when I'm helping others, when I'm helping to bake something, when I'm tying laces for my siblings, tell me what are the things that you're really good at? What are your superpowers that you think you'll be able to use if you were, to, if you were going to apply for a job? And that job, guys, could even be in your own home. You may raise your hand at home to say, mom, dad, I would like to help with that such and such. And I know that I can do it because I can, my superpower is such and such. So what I'd like you to do is write down a few of your superpowers. So Henry says that he likes to draw. Um, Okay. Thanks, Henry. And Egypt says that she's patient with teaching people. Wow. That's awesome. Oh, uh, Mustafa says uh, he knows French. Somebody else knows French. Bonjour. <laughs> Bonjour, monsieur. And, okay, okay yep. Yeah. Any others? Any others? What's, your, what's, what's one of your superpowers? Wow. We need you to have three superpowers. Three superpowers. Okay. Let's write. So, so everybody write down the three superpowers. My fish. People said coding. Oh, so okay. My, superpower, my fish superpower is helping uh, my little sister. And when she falls down and when she's hurt, I check her knee or I check if she has any marks or scars. Okay, so helping your sister. Helping your sister. Sounds like there's a little nurse in the making. That's a good one. Or a doctor. Or, or a nurse. doctor. Yeah. And my second superpower is that I play sports. Ooh, yeah. you're athletic. Very good. And when, and I am, hmm. And I also help people if they need help with anything. So if they need help with their homework or for questions. Oh my goodness. I hear a doctor, a teacher out of you, Mickey. That's fantastic. What are some of our guests? What are your superpowers? So let's see here. Um, Pearl says she, uh, she can speak French. Uh, Melissa says coaching my brother for his sports. Good mm -hmm. job. 
Uh, Egypt says she babysits her cousin. Niobe says my sister and I can speak English. Wow, English, Spanish, and Mandarin. Whoa. whoa, 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 whoa. Five languages? Was that oh five? my gosh. That's a prize? That's amazing. Pearl that is says, fantastic. Really good with math. Um, whoa, Mustafa awesome. Is, Engineering, I'm hearing. Uh-huh. Uh, Mustafa says uh, English tutoring coding, I think you're saying. So you teach coding in English? Um, and mm -hmm. really good with math and Arabic. Look Excellent. All these languages on here. Does all these so languages. Wow. Okay. What else? Any other skills? Let's see. Um, baking. Niobe says baking. We also code and bake. Oh, da Danish says science, French, basketball, coding. So much coding on here. I love I know. it. I, I love it. I'm going to be hiring you. I do information and cybersecurity and network analysts and application development. Those are all the people in my wheelhouse. So I want to speak to you guys. <laughs> These are my future leaders here. I love it. Uh, Pert says swimming. That's oh, my awesome. fantastic. Carter said math. Good Excellent. Uh, okay. He's oh, wait, two more messages. Uh, Henry says he likes basketball. He likes to swim. Um, and I'm not sure if he's still typing. So, okay. All right. That's good. You guys have a lot of superpowers. You guys have a lot of superpowers and a lot of I unique identifiers. So let's see how many of them and which ones did I miss? Because clearly there's a few important ones that I didn't get on here. So some of you mentioned babysitting. Awesome. Networking. Someone said they were good at languages. Languages I did not put on here. So whoever put the multi languages that you speak will be getting a prize because that's clearly something that I missed. Coding, all for my coders out there. That is an amazing skill set to have right now. Somebody mentioned swimming. That is a life skill that you will never forget and you can always utilize that skill to save someone's life. You can be a paramedic, you can be a lifeguard, you can do anything with swimming because it's, it's a life skill that I think is underrated. So good for you. Um, tutoring. Mickey mentioned that she likes to help people with their homework. So that is a great, that tells me that someone might be interested in teaching later on. Um, tutoring is great. Um, delegation. Somebody mentioned something about babysitting. Guys, you know, babysitting is one of those positions and skill sets or superpower that goes again i think it's underrated people think oh it's just babysitting but there is a lot of skills that come out of that did you know that you if you're a babysitter you are probably and if you're babysitting more than one person at a time you probably can help people with conflict resolution and conflict resolution would be an example is if you have two siblings that might be fighting and you are not getting along or arguing or have some type of disagreement and you can help manage that situation is called conflict resolution so that they can get on to doing something that's probably more entertaining. So Niobe says that she's really good at convincing people, convincing people. Yeah, she says I'm really good at convincing people and I love to read. So convincing people, that's good. So maybe you're a good negotiator. You're a good negotiator. I'm going to have to bring you in to speak to my client so I can get the top dollar. <laughs> um, excellent. So negotiation skills, communication skills. If you're good at, what was it that she said? Sorry, what was the word she used? Uh, convincing people. Convincing people. So you probably have very good communication skills. Okay, so now it's going to be taking those skills and getting the right words onto your resume so that they match. So do you remember at the first part of the presentation, I said that I have to do skills matching. So when I'm looking and dissecting a resume, and I take my magnifying glass to make sure that those skills that my client is looking for are reflective on your resume. That's what I'm doing. So I'm looking for things like delegation, tutoring, conflict resolution, 
swimming, it could be babysitting, depending how many years of experience you have. Baking, can someone tell me why baking would be an important skill? skill? What would be a unique identifier or a superpower with baking? Can anybody tell me? Uh, I think it's a good skill because you, you can help a thousand people who are out there sitting in the hot or cold and they need food. Okay, so yeah, you can help prepare food. Yes. Um, so let's see, uh, Danish says math. Yes. Uh, uh, Mustafa says patience, I think. Yeah. Uh, um, oh, very uh, good. Bobo says, Bobo, if you want to write your, your name, um, so Bobo says you follow instructions. Yes. Uh, Pearl says help people who are hungry. Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, <clears throat> Egypt says baking is a good skill because with COVID-19 restaurants weren't open and people had to learn how to cook. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. And then you had a lot more hot meals, right? That yeah. is so good. That's really healthy for you, right? right? Um, How many of you guys in the room have ever been, and please correct me, when I was younger, a girl guide. They used to be called brownies, but not anymore. They're called girl guides. Is there anybody in the chat that has been a girl guide or a cub for boys or a cadet? Raise your hand if you've been any one of those things. Anybody? His mom was, and we had three people raise their hands. Okay. And one of the things that you have to do every year is sell cookies. So don't forget about your sales and selling superpower because it's not easy. I see kids at the supermarket coming to my door sometimes asking me to buy Girl Guide cookies. And that takes a lot of strength. And I think that sales and selling is another um, superpower that doesn't get shared a lot, okay? So good job, guys, excellent. So now what? What makes these superpowers important for my resume? Does anybody, I think we said before, but does anybody want to put an answer in? What makes these superpowers that we just spoke about important for your resume? Anybody? So we had two people raise their hands. Uh, Amiga, <clears throat> Amiga, if you want to type it into the chat, then that'd be perfect. Or Carter. Yeah, these superpowers are important. Wait, let me just see. These superpowers are important because they distinct you from everyone else. Whoa. An awesome answer, Egypt. Yay. Uh, yes. <laughs> because it is a super power, unique identifier. Fantastic. Anybody else? Uh, these superpowers are important because they help with people and they help me become better at things. So when I have to do a challenge of them, I know what to do so I can help people with them or I can do them by myself. And I yes, know. independence. Independent oh. lady, Mickey. That's right. You want to be able to do things on your own. And that is another skill set or superpower that doesn't get discussed sometimes. Being able to work in a team and independently is so important. So we have a couple more answers. We have okay. Danish says it makes the first candidate uh, for most jobs. So I think it's like it puts you at the top of the list. Help yes. you find the right job. Hurt says, help you find the right job. Um, Mustafa says, so the employer will know that you have great skills. Pearl says, because it makes you different than everyone else. Yes. I love your answers, everybody. You guys are doing I love amazing. it. This, you guys are on the ball. Unbelievable. And yes, they're right, because you want to be hired. You want that employer to say, hire me. I'm going to be fantastic and I can help you in your department with this job be better and so that we all can be better 
um, and make the company run more efficiently. All right, so now we're wondering now, how do we put all of this together? How do I prepare my resume? So let's talk a little bit about, um, sorry, I jumped ahead there. So you had a little sneak peek. So yeah. what information, so sorry, what basic- uh, yeah. We just, we have a few more minutes. Okay, so I'm gonna go quickly. Yeah. Okay. All right, so we have, um, what's really important for a resume is first of all, every resume, I don't care if it's your mom, your grandparents, or even if you're eight years old. These, this basic information needs to be on your resume. Your name, your address, phone number or numbers, if you have more than one, and your email address. That's just the basics. Also, your skills, otherwise known as a superpower or unique identifier needs to be on there. Your experience, so the work that you may have done that enhances these skills here. Any volunteer experience that you're doing needs to be on your resume. Your school activities, do you participate in a sport? Do you help out with student council? Do you help your, teach, do you help your teacher help other kids in your class? And then your academic honors. So when you graduate either from grade five or grade eight or grade 12, you have a graduation, even from kindergarten you might receive an award for having the top marks in math, English, you may get an athletic award. So these are things, items rather, on your resume that you need to add to your resume to show off your skills and your superpowers. And it is a showing off session. It's a chance for you, as somebody mentioned, to put you at the top of the list. All right, so let's just quickly take a look at somebody who is had a little bit of working experience and here are some key things that they have on here that's important so they have a description some people call it an objective or they tell a little bit about themselves so alfredo says i am a hard-working student who's looking for an entry-level position in the food industry i have a leadership i have leadership experience and a passion for food Excuse me, Miss Jane. Sorry, okay. um, a couple of kids had some questions. And okay. They yes. So, Amiga and Carter, I see you guys raised your hands. You've got to type it in the chat box for me, please. But you guys have been doing amazing with helping each other answer the question. So, uh, Egypt was asking, what was the fourth thing in basic info after phone number? And uh, Niobe answered email address. So, good for you guys. Thank you. Yeah, so name, address, phone number, and email address. Thank you for helping out, okay? Maybe take a screenshot, like take a picture for the next screen. Skills, experience, volunteer work, school activities, and academic honors where you've been highlighted for your academic success because that is very important. All right? So here in this resume, you can see that Alfredo has listed all of those things, a description, personal strength, superpower and skills, enthusiastic team player, hardworking with good, hardworking and good with instructions. We spoke about that. Eager to learn new skills and concepts. I think Mickey mentioned that about being in the classroom and getting stronger um, at school and her learning. We've got contact details, we've got achievements, and we have their work, um, we have Alfredo's work history. So a little bit what he, what he has done, not a lot of work, but that's okay. He's been able to take orders, he's welcomed patrons to the establishment and taken them to their table. That's a skill, he's been a cashier assistant, so helping out with cash and credit cards and gift cards. And then he's got his education history, so where he's gone to school. So he's got junior school and high school here. Okay, so this is really a basic resume or an entry level resume and Alfredo said so. He's hardworking and he's looking for an entry level position, meaning that he's looking not to be the supervisor, but he's looking for an opportunity where he can learn, where he can start at the beginning and then advance his skills. Any questions about the resume? 
No? Okay. So with the exercise, it's going to be your turn. Where you're going to write down, I know that we're kind of short on time, but you're going to write down your superpowers like you have, the basic information that's part of your resume. I'm going to go back to this. Your skills, your experience with volunteering, work experience that you may have at home or in the classroom, any school activities that you participate in, and any academic honors that you have received to date. Okay. And what I may do is if you are interested, I can send you a template so that you can prepare your resume. So what we can do is at the, um, when the video is posted around before three o'clock today, I always have in the description box uh, on our YouTube channel, the contact information for our expert. So Miss Jane's uh, contact information will be there. So if you want a if you would like a uh, sample of a resume or template, then you can email her and she can send it to you. Perfect. Is that okay? That's fantastic. All right. So guys, with that, I want to say thank you so much for the amazing participation that you had today. I think all of your answers were right on the money. You're on your way to success. And I'm here to answer any questions, just like Ms. Stacy said, if you have any questions or need help with anything, please feel free to reach out to me to help you with your resume. Thank you so much, Ms. Stacy and Kidneynomics for having me conduct this presentation and webinar today. Aw, oh, thank you. Yay, everybody give Ms. Jane a big round of applause. We found that so informative, right? So, we thank you so much for your information. That was awesome. If you could awesome. stop sharing your screen for me, please, that would be amazing. Did you say stop sharing? Yes. Okay. So just go to the top. You have to exit out. Yeah. Perfect. All righty. So let's finish up, everybody. I know we're all we're a little bit past our 40 minute mark. So let's I'll be super quick. All right. So final question. What would happen if kids became more financially literate? And our answer is real cha chance that change change that impacts the world. Real change that impacts the world. And why do we say this? Because the more development that you guys have with your financial literacy skills, the better edu educated choices and decisions you will make going forward as you grow into your adulthood and you'll know what is great for you and what are things that you should maybe stay away from. So the skills that you develop now will help you to in your future and the things that you do in your future will have a real impact on the world because we know that every kid on here is going to do something that is going to help change the world, right? And that's what we're here for. So Upcoming schedule as usual. Upcoming schedule coming up for next week is Miss Allison Walker. Miss Allison Walker is going to talk to you or we're going to do vision boarding for kids. So I'm really excited about this one also because I think vision boards are a great, great start to help focus you guys on anything that it is that you want to do. So we are gonna do vision boarding. I've been talking to you a, a couple of weeks now or about a few weeks now about getting some magazines. Um, so what you will need is a few magazines so that you can cut out the pictures to put on the, the cardboard. You will need a cardboard, um, what's it called, a Bristol board or a card no. cardboard? Cardboard, a yeah. white one, right? To, they're at the dollar store. I think you get two, four dollar, at least here in Canada. Uh, you'll need some scissors and some glue. And then any other thing that you kind of think that you want to put on your vision board. So stickers, glitter, glitter, a lot of glitter for this one. <laughs> Anything like that that you want to add to your vision board to make it fun and uniquely you, right? So that's what we want. So that's going to be next week. Then after that, for July 31st, it's going to be Miss Teresa Shaver. She's going to talk about entrepreneurship for kids. I don't even know what that is. So entrepreneurship is if you want to own your own business. Yeah. Yes. 
So let's say if you want to start your own comic book line, or you have a line that you want to start your own lip glosses, or scrunchies, or lemonade stand, or a book club, you, it doesn't matter. You, these are called entrepreneurship skills. And we're going to start it off. So our first session is going to be with Miss Teresa um, on July 31st. And uh, we're going to dive deeper into entrepreneurship on the platform as, as we go along. Because even if you are a doctor or a lawyer or a basketball star or tennis pro, it doesn't matter what you are. You are the CEO of your job. And let me say that again. You are the CEO of your job, okay? So it doesn't matter, even if you start out as a cashier in a grocery store, you are the CEO of your position as a cashier at your job. So you should know your skills as to what you need to do to develop your skills as a cashier, or if it is that you wanna move up or start your own business, you need to know these skills. It doesn't matter what job or career that you have. So we're gonna talk, we're gonna start this off with Teresa, with Teresa on July 31st. And then on Friday, August 7th, we're gonna talk about credit cards. Credit card yes. We need to know about credit cards. So we're gonna talk to you about credit cards for kids. That will be another amazing session. So we are very much looking forward for that. Okay, so rounding it off. We'd like to thank everybody for joining once again this week. So listen, I really need your feedback. So if you could let your parents know, um, I'm going to be sending out a survey in the next week because we're going to do things to, to improve as we go along kidonomics. And I need to know what you think. You, all the kiddies and your parents, what do you think about kidonomics? How can we improve, improve uh, the platform for you? What other topics you want to talk about? So I'm gonna send out a survey, expect that in the next week in your inbox. So just ask your parents, did you get an email from Miss Stacy on kidonomics? Because I need to know your thoughts. This is really important. I really need your help, okay? All right, so. In the meanwhile, if you have any questions at all at any time, of course, you can always email me at kidonomics101 at gmail.com. Uh, and please follow us on our, on our social, social media handle. So what is it? Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, and TikTok. We're going to post. We're going to post on TikTok. But, We've been saying this for like three weeks now. But, so you have something to watch, follow me on TikTok. Oh, my gosh. No, it's, no, 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 no. All right. So we will post on TikTok. Uh, but if you have any questions, use the hashtag Kittynomics or Ask Kittynomics. Um, but, and also remember, all of our videos on Fridays is posted on our YouTube channel. So if you missed anything uh, in the session and you had more questions, you can always watch it back on our YouTube channel, right? Every single video is posted there from stocks to mortgages to assets and liabilities, budgeting. It is all there on our YouTube channel. And I highly suggest that you do watch them because a lot of the sessions do uh, come uh, pack into each other, right? So the things that we learned in assets and liabilities carried forward to saving and RESPs and things like that. So I highly suggest that you watch our past videos to gain more skills, but this video will be posted around uh, before three o'clock today. So thank you everybody for joining. Thank you. And staff optimization. Thank you. And we'll see you next week. Bye. Bye. Bye.